We Welsh are not a united people, and I won't say that we haven't enjoyed our divisions. There are the mountains that run from the extreme north to our southern frontier on the Bristol Channel. This has landed us in places where the transport conditions are those of outer Mongolia. And those of us who lived on the steeper slopes have developed the leg muscles of a yak. We have two languages and plenty to argue about in both. English poured in in the wake of industry, and many of us in our childhood heard the language of our fathers die on our tongues. The north of our land is full of great silent fastnesses where the sheep and ponies can still look shocked and resentful at the sight of a car or a man. But the southern part of Wales is a network of valleys where we've dug enough coal to warm every cold hand on earth, where we've made enough steel to prop the earth up if it should fall, and also a love of singing. Singing so loud and passionate, it's often been difficult to know what people are trying to say to each other. There is one day when all these things and people come together on March the 1st. This day we celebrate our saint, David, whose church and shrine stand on a gray headland facing the Atlantic. On this day, we mourn his passing and await the return of his gentleness and wisdom. Richard Burton recalls these things. And after he had bestowed his blessing on all, St. David spoke these words. Noble brothers and sisters, be glad and guard your faith and religion and do the little things which you have heard from me and which I have shown you. And I shall go the way which our fathers go. And fare you well, said David, and may your conduct be steadfast upon the earth, for we shall never meet here again. And then was heard a cry rising from all, a wail and lamentation and weeping and people exclaiming, Woe to us that the earth does not swallow us, that fire does not burn us, would that God would raise the sea over the land and cause the mountains to fall upon us and almost all that were present were near unto death. And close on cockrow, lo, a host of angels filled the city and all places in the city were filled with song and joy. And in the morning hour, behold, Jesus Christ came accompanied by the nine orders of heavenly beings as when he surrounded by them in majesty and the brilliant sun shone over the whole host. And that day, the first day of March, Jesus Christ bore away David's soul in great triumph and gladness and honor. After his hunger, his thirst and cold, and his labors, his abstinence and his acts of charity, and his weariness and his tribulation, and his afflictions and his anxiety for the world, the angels received his soul, and they bore it to a place where the light does not fail, and there is rest without labor, and joy without sadness, an abundance of all good things, and victory and brilliance and beauty, where Christ's champions are commended, and the undeserving rich are ignored, where there is health without sickness, youth without old age, Peace without dissension, glory without vain ostentation, songs that do not pall, and rewards without end. <laughs> 